and welcome to another episode of the MHR podcast. I'm Emma. I'm Andy. How are you doing today, Andy? Oh, I'm How are you feeling? Good. I'm all right, yeah. I'm excited yeah. for another week of discussing all things work, world of work. Well, this week I thought we could do a really, really nice topic and it's all about the topic... A friendship. Friends. Friend, friends. Friendship in the workplace. Friendship the in the workplace. Only friendship I'll allow. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's yeah. been <laughs> it's been a really big topic, actually, for yeah. this past sort of week or so. Okay. Um, of actually considering the importance of friendships in the workplace. Okay. And in all seriousness, the actual benefits that they can bring, not only to the individual, but also to the, the employer, the organisation as well. Because it's a key part um, of company culture, isn't it? The no. ability to forge friendships Absolutely. through shared Absolutely. values and likewise thinking, collaboration. Absolutely. We're talking about creating those relationships at work yeah. whereby you can, as you say, really support collaboration, really support that culture and just make it a friendly place to work. I suppose it's know? hard to enjoy a workplace if you hate everyone in it. Well, exactly. Well, mm. nobody wants that, do no, they? No, you want to get along. You want to make friends. Exactly. And if you remember, you know, we spend a significant amount of time in a place of work or with a place of work. Absolutely. And I suppose it's only natural you want to form friendships and that's what makes things a lot better. Exactly. Okay. I think the reason it's, the reason it's coming to um, <clears throat> kind of the forefront of the news this week is... There's a discussion around the impact of hybrid working and remote working on okay. these friendships. Right. So there's it's it's not a particularly biased study, but it's looking at whether there's a difference in how relationships work, you know, in a in a purely office setting versus hybrid versus remote setting. Um, and there's a study that came out that said that 57% of people uh, say that having a best friend in the workplace makes work more enjoyable. Nice. Um, 22% say that they feel more productive with friends and 21% say that friendship makes them more creative. I like that. So I like that of that 57, only 22 felt they did more. The other <laughs> the other odd percent are like, yeah, it's great, but we're not getting anything done. I think I think the important thing to understand is, is that it isn't just about collaboration and productivity which of course we will always want to push here at the mhr podcast mm -hmm. but actually having that life experience where you enjoy going to work yeah and you can be building friendships that last a lifetime yeah absolutely. so having having that base and having that kind of safe space of people is really important and there are suggestions that that kind of hybrid and remote working can create a bit of a sticking point around that because you don't have as much of that face-to-face -face contact um yeah. and you know what impact does that have yeah i think i think in in my personal view before we before we go and having a chat about this that it comes down to the individual and it comes down to the organization style you know those that are more accurately you know more you know better equipped for hybrid and remote working you find different ways of, of building those relationships you and know I, I suppose it's on your your experience you'd like to say your comfortability as well mm -hmm. um a lot of people had to learn how to maintain a friendship with people during lockdown because yeah. they had to do it remotely and that was quite difficult. Some people decided, actually, I'm, I don't need to check in with you as much, whatever. Some people really struggled. There was apps that even came out, wasn't there? For, like, yes, games and stuff. yeah, yeah. But I, um, I, would, I would imagine my assumption is that it's always harder to build kind of more personable bonds with people in a digital setting. Yeah. Whereas in a per, you know, in a physical setting, you get much more sense of who that person is, or their attitude, or their tone, or how you know visually yeah. how they're displaying sure. themselves as well is a bit more easy to understand. So there are I challenges so. there, right? Yeah, is it? Yeah, you're right. It's that it's that body language that mm. you're missing. But but ultimately, you know, regardless of your your work setup, there are so many benefits to you know, having a friend at work or having, you know, close friends, best friend even yeah. at work. You know, I know that I'm your best friend, Andy. You, you don't need to announce it on this podcast. Yeah. But I know how you feel. Who's your best friend? Um, it's fine. You don't I'd rather not talk about yeah, it. Yeah, that's okay. Um, that's awesome. So that's what I wanted to talk about. So the, the key benefits of having a best friend at work and how it can improve collaboration, productivity, yep. and what organisations can get out of it as well. Makes sense. All right. D Let's dive do in it. then. Let's dive straight in. You got an article. How? That's the usual gimmick, isn't it? Hey, don't disrespect the article. Okay. No, there's, there's, some, there's some great things that, mm. that we've been looking at, and I've pulled together an example of some 
uh, key benefits from kind of across across the internet of really good benefits of having a best friend at work. Nice. So the first thing that we've got here, um, which I think is a really good one, is work friendships increase job satisfaction. Yeah. So employees with close work friends experience higher levels of job satisfaction. They are happier uh, and less likely to leave the company. Uh, and a, a recent poll found that those who have a best friend at work are twice as likely to be engaged in their jobs, better at engaging customers, produce high quality work, uh, have a greater sense of well-being and are less likely to get injured on the job. Interesting. I suppose that work, you've got to look at lots of different mm. industries. But if you have someone who's, you know, really you're really close with or gets you or knows how you work, if you're in a very kind of manual job. Yes, or you're that's at more health true. and safety risks. Yeah. I suppose having someone that's a bit more aware of you and how you work is probably going like, to... Having having that buddy yeah. to, to ensure your safety. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, like I know no, you, Greg, we right. get along, but remember, I know you forget a full remember to do that so you don't have the thing. Like that oh, has an back. impact. Yeah, Greg's back. Um, that's nice. I, I imagine it's a huge factor for retention, isn't it? If you start oh, to build definitely. your personal life around your role because you enjoy it and that's where your social life happens as well, mm -hmm. you're, not, you're going to be less... Um, inclined to separate yourself from that, aren't you? Yeah, and I think a, a big, big benefit to 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 making work friendships is that there's more likely to be that like-mindedness. Mm. You know, you've you've both chosen the same and/or similar career. Yeah. Um, you may be at similar kind of intellectual levels. You may have similar yeah. interests because of what you've chosen as well. So those relationships can feel a lot more natural and perhaps even progress a lot quicker as well yeah. because it's all it's like a situation ship yeah it's that social thing's a point I, I was just looking at a stat you've shared as well i know this is a, a american research but it shows how it, i'm sure it's kind of relevant across the board generally how like uh, different people have kind of fed back on in different stages of their life what percentage of people feel like they've lost touch with a lot of friends mm. and yeah i think it's quite interesting because obviously you spend a lot a, you know a long part of your life in a working environment you do um and you know the key years of um the, the, the key years it's shown between between your 20s and your 30s and 40s are the biggest thing when most people feel they've lost touch with their friends like they've gone from a young friendship group maybe at school yep. to building friendships group around work um, and it show, there's, it looks like the stats indicate that the, you know, the longer they're in a workplace the more they grow that friendship group because mm -hmm. it's easier to build when you're in a, a working environment with each other so it's, it is it's for people's well-being social well-being it's really important as well to have those connections in a workplace as well as a home life oh, definitely and in you spend more of your time with your work colleagues than you do your family yeah. in, in most weeks you know we, yeah. you know for, for us we're here um you know what we would call a nine to five job monday to friday yeah. so we're, we're spending more time hour on hour than what we would with you know our, our, our partners our husbands yeah. you know whatever so it's, it's really really important to have that support system um which brings me on quite nicely to the next one which is uh, workplace friends can reduce burnout and boost productivity. That's nice. Um, so, you know, regardless of the task you're performing, you know, employees are likely to experience workplace burnout at some point. And that's something that, again, we've spoken about quite openly on the podcast about what that, that impact can cause from having that burnout. I suppose... It's it's helping giving you that soundboard as well, or that extra perspective. A lot of times where I feel really exhausted, or I'm going to burn out at work, or I'm I'm really struggling. Mm. I've been inside my my yeah my head. I'm too much inside my own head, yeah. worrying about what's going on, tripping over all these projects, or what I'm supposed to be doing. And sometimes you just need to have someone to go, look, you know, give me some perspective on this. Where am I? And they yeah. go, actually, you know, talking about it, it makes me feel a lot more like I can manage things. And it's somebody who can very directly relate to the frustrations that you're having as well. Yeah. And so any feedback that they do offer will actually be something that's kind of productive and you can take away with you, which is yeah. another really important point to make. And we've mentioned it in another podcast, haven't we? You know, the trick to kind of any, any most issues is in business is communication. The, so, the yeah, sooner you're able to communicate sure. something to someone, the sooner you're able to uh, look at an issue or resolve a problem. Mm. And the first person you're going to go to is a friend. And if you have yeah. a friend in work, it really can help you solve those problems you're, you're, you're looking at. No, definitely. So the next one that we've got is that work friends can actually improve the overall business. So in addition to helping avoid burnout, work friends can bring other positive gains. So there's some research here that found that when 60% of employees in a company have a work best friend, mm. safety incidents decreased by 36%. So this is the budding yeah. thing we were speaking about before. 
Customer engagement increased by 7%, because okay. you've got that improved communication. Yeah. And profits increased by 12%. Nice. So this presence of solid work friendships can impact you know, multiple facets of the business. Yeah. I think that's really interesting. I think when, when we're looking at friendships and looking at building that team, as you said at the start, you have an opportunity to work together more collaboratively. Yeah. But I also think that you feel more comfortable to be able to challenge yeah. as well. Yeah. So, you know, t to ensure that we're coming to the coming to the same agreement, we're coming to a compromise. You know, you want to be able to challenge each other because you f you feel like you're in an environment where you can do that because you have a relationship with that person whereby you know that it won't be taken personally. Yeah. Um and it can also really elevate ideas as well. If yeah. you work in a very insular and siloed way, your ideas can only kind of take you so far. Whereas if you have the opportunity to collaborate, um, and especially if you're doing that with somebody that you feel comfortable with, yeah. you know, the world's almost your oyster yeah. in that sense. That's where the know? magic happens as well, isn't it, at work? When yeah. you're doing something creative or you're working on a project and you're bouncing off each other and you're getting these ideas. It's like, oh, I didn't even didn't even think we could go that way, but because the energy and the fusorism, that friendship you have, mm -hmm. allows you to have that kind of creative spark. It's, that's great. It's a great feeling, isn't it? It gets you excited about the way Definitely. you work. Definitely. I mean, I, I relate that directly to the two of us. Like, I hold you up with how funny I am. You know, yeah, where would you be? Where would you be without and me? And what I like about this is that, like, every week we'll come in and we'll talk about the podcast. And if it wasn't for all of my ideas, you'd look terrible. And I like that I can help you. And I think that's how our <laughs> friendship works. I like that that's I'm very kind. I'm pushing you along, and that's, that's great. That's very kind. It's, it's beautiful to watch. What a friendship we're building here. Yeah. So strong. Mm. <clears throat> um. So. This actually brings me on quite nicely yeah. to my next section, oh, yeah. actually, um, Andrew. <laughs> um, workplace friendships promote friendly challenges to improve. So, yeah. I've kind of, I've, I've kind of pinched my point from previously, but they're more likely to engage in friendly workplace competition when accomplishing tasks, yeah. spurring each other on to produce high quality work, yeah. or challenging when they think that there is a better way of doing things or coming to some sort of agreement. Yeah, they can be your most constructive critic because you trust them, you trust their judgment and you have that relationship where you can be very open and honest with each other. And you're more likely to take criticism positively from somebody that you trust and that you are good friends with. Yeah. Um, so for yourself, um, Andy, yeah. we're, we're probably going to have to talk off camera where I can give you some constructive uh, yeah. criticism. And you know... Okay because I'm your friend, that when I come back to you and say, well, actually what you're doing there was rubbish, it's not because I think it's, you know, it's not a personal thing. It's because <laughs> I feel confident I as your friend to know, I can tell you when you've been rubbish. That's very uh, polite of you, Andy. Yeah, and I'll do that. That's very polite. That's fine. Hmm. We'll talk later. <laughs> yeah. Though the thing is, interesting, <laughs> so obviously we do get along and it's great. It's yeah, part we of do. Our, our friendship is that we get to do this and we can, we can talk yeah. and we, we've built our friendship yeah, around yeah, that yeah. as well. But one of the, the flip side of that must be also, it must be quite difficult when you've got people who are friends who might grow in a different way in a business mm -hmm. or maybe, you know, your friend ends up becoming your line manager. Get like, that promotion that you want. Yeah, or mm. yeah, and obviously you support each other, but also how does a friendship dynamic work when someone has more responsibility over mm. the other person and how is that respected? And yeah, I think people have to be very conscious of, you know, what's my role in this business and how does that reflect on my friendship? Um, because you will come to disagreements, or yeah. friendships do. Oh, well, there's a, there's a balance to be had with that, I think. There is always going to be the importance and the relevance of friendships but it's also important to be mindful of ensuring that that doesn't impact your yeah. professional work life either um yeah. certainly when you're looking at a, an imbalance in power yeah. as you've just mentioned there is a great example um of just ensuring that there's those kind of boundaries uh, yeah. to be mindful of yeah um, a final point that we've got here is that friendly workplaces uh, have a lower employee turnover. Yeah. Um, so employees who have a friend at work are less likely to search for other jobs um, because work friendships tend to provide a sense of work-life balance that allows employees to enjoy social life in their workplace. Um, as we know, employee retention is more critical than ever. Yeah. <clears throat> it's something that we, we've spoken about a lot, certainly at the start of the year. Um a common pandemic side effect has, has been the great resignation, 
which we spoke about, mm -hmm. um, which uh, saw 4.3 million workers quit their jobs, which yeah. is it's quite a significant number. Yeah. So even as we're now getting into a position where the unemployment rate is improving and we're starting to see more stability uh, from a retention point of view, um, you know, there are attitudes have shifted generally post COVID yeah. in terms of what people want out of work um, and money doesn't tend to be enough to keep you there anymore. So mm -hmm. having having that social element in work is is really important to yeah. make it feel like you have that social element still and you have those reasons to stay there. Um, I think we've all been guilty in the past of, um, you know, wanting to stay in a job because of the people that you work with um, and really valuing them over the role that you do. Yeah. Um, I know I can certainly say that for myself in, in a previous role, um, that the people are great. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you build really strong friendships. Yeah, of and. Course. I think it's it's being able to move on from that and be like, if we're good friends, we'll be friends outside of work yeah, of course. moving forward. And yeah. that happened in that instance. But um yeah, I think it's it's been yeah. it's been really interesting these past few years to see what impact that has had. Yeah. So there's there's from what we're reading here, there's been a few tips as well actually of what businesses can do to kind of encourage that kind of social element, mm -hmm. create more friendships within their workplace. Um, so we can all feel those benef the benefit of that kind of collaboration, that friendly atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So one of them is uh, don't limit conversations to email or formal meetings. You know, yes. How can you enable scenarios <coughs> in the workplace where you can have more of a personal conversation? Um, and that doesn't have to be about formal projects. It, I like there's something simple like just asking how someone is. How you doing? You all right, mate? How yeah. you doing? What's going on? Mm. I think that just means that, you know, I get it. We're going to be stressed today. There might be a meeting. We disagree on something. There might be whatever. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we're people, right? You can talk to me about how you're feeling. Yeah, you know? oh, definitely. And and I really like one of the examples that they've given here of doing like a walk-in meeting. Yeah. So if you found that you've been sat down for a long time, constantly in and out of meetings, and you just <clears throat> you just need that kind of a bit of a break, Yeah. Um, you can break the formality by taking a step yeah. outside of the traditional setup of a, of a meeting. So yeah. at your desk or, or in a meeting room and just, uh, you know, go for a walk. Yeah. You know, whether that's even, you know, for us it would be, go into the canteen to go and get a drink or a bite mm. to eat. We can talk about work on the way there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it feels a lot less formal. And actually, some of my most productive conversations come from those yeah. opportunities. I love that stuff know? where it's any opportunity we can learn more about a person behind what their role is. Because yeah. you, it's very easy to go, oh, you do that, you work in that, so that's what you do, that's yeah. your personality type. No, oh, actually, I got this person away, we had a chat over lunch or something. Mm. It turns out they're into all of this stuff and it's really interesting. It's got nothing to do with who they are, but I get a sense of who they are as a person. It's, and I like that yeah. stuff because their role doesn't interest me at all. I don't understand it, but them as a person, I get it. It takes you know? the mask off a little bit, doesn't it? it, yeah. it drops those formalities and actually breaks those barriers to make you realize you know we're all human yeah. at the end of the day and if you know if you understand how your friends work or how their friends friends think and when you're working with those people you can get a better understanding of how you can work together with them like actually i know producer lee or assistant producer tom and mm -hmm. quite frankly i couldn't talk to assistant producer tom as i talked to lee because he's just not interested in what i've got to say so oh. i go and take a different approach so he'll actually listen to me oh andy yeah i go through hr for assistant producer tom because we, we, we don't talk to i'm her, not really. surprised yeah, i'm so honestly not surprised yeah. he's very difficult he's very he's a bully very difficult is what he is because um, that's just one example um t yeah take interest in employees personal lives that's been yeah. recommended there don't go too far no. Um, no, no. Congratulate, share, like. We've talked about recognition a lot, but the more you can remind someone about how impressed you are of how they work or yeah. how what they do benefits you, or also share that across the team so people can see how well regarded that person is, that really yeah. helps people uh, uh, form friendships. And of and course, we are big advocates for that huge, um, yeah. on our um, employee platform. Yeah. Um, where that's a great opportunity to broadcast that to the wider business as yeah. well and that's really demonstrable of you know that you are genuinely happy with with the work that that person's done yeah. and you feel that they deserve yeah. that recognition to, to be seen across the yeah. business and the last point here that i thought was really interesting is to be mindful of pandemic induced mm -hmm. loneliness because we were all forced into a way of working whether we liked it or not, or whether yeah. it's suitable or not, into working in a way that was probably a lot less kind of connected or physically kind of cohesive. Mm -hmm. um, so it, 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 I think socializing and I think making friends is a bit of a muscle as well. 
And I think it if is. you take that off or you take the ability to do that, people can very easily become isolated. Mm -hmm. And different people are, are better at communicating things in a different way, right? Um, so if you're not feeling comfortable to reach out, you can very easily find yourself in a bit of a social island, can't you? Yeah, And that's not definitely. just relevant for the pandemic or the lockdown. I know we're fed up with talking about that all the time. But it's also about recognizing that in person or different people have different social batteries or limits. Yeah. And oh, one absolutely. person's team building exercise or social away day is another person's hell <laughs> because that's not what they like to do. They may be yeah. more for comfortable in different levels. So I think taking the time to be really considerate about how people like to forge their friendships or social connections I think that's really, really, really important. important. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I think... Another point that it's just making here to wrap up and, and what I pulled on at the beginning is for remote workers as well. Um, it says that, you know, more remote employees tended to, to lack workplace friends. Yeah. Certainly if they've moved jobs kind of during that, that period where we were all remote working considerably more. Yeah. Um, so there's a great tip that they've put on here just to kind of round this off that it's important to help remote and hybrid workers stay connected. Yeah. So considering things like implementing remote communication, um, you know, our, our people platform is a great example of that, or scheduling and project management tools where they can get more actively involved um, and kind of carve out those work relationships yeah. um, and feel more part of the gang. Yeah. So... Producer segment time. I've got an email from uh, assistant producer Tom, who's given himself dopamine provider today. That's his title oh. in his email. He's got a few questions for us. Are you ready? Oh. Right. Oh. So, so he says, well, hi both. After 30 plus episodes together, oh, oh. Uh, you must know a fair bit about each other by now. Yeah. Uh, or do you? Drum oh. roll. Yeah. Here are some questions to test you. Oh. Right, you ready? Oh, my. Question one. Oh Out of the two of us, who is the most likely to clap when a plane lands? Oh, that is you. It, no, it's not me at all. And if that you do it, we won't be friends. Is oh, I don't, 100% can't be, you. No, I'm not. Are no, you I'm the not. one that no, at, at the start Absolutely of a Jet not. 2 flight, you're singing Jess Glynn? Like, nope. darling, hold my hand. Who do you think I am? Because I don't want to walk right. alone. So none of us do that. I don't know. <laughs> and it is definitely I would you. definitely would not do no, it. Anyway. Right, question two. Who is most likely to walk into the office with their clothes on inside out? Uh, that's definitely you. It, whoa, that hello. That is definitely you <laughs> that was not going the way i thought really yeah really yeah how do i and wear a suit inside out you'd make it I'd work try. you'd make it work on yeah fair enough well, you'd make it work i appreciate the confidence in me there oh that's Go all right on. question three who is most likely to lie to the waiter that their birth uh, that it's their birthday and get a free cake oh well that would be me no I'd, that would be me i do it all the time do you? Yeah, every week's a birthday. Oh, all right, chublet. Yeah. What's your favourite cake? A chocolate fudge. If I'm going to get like a birthday cake. You want dense? I, yeah, I want, I want weight. Oh, okay. So if, if you're going for free, you want as much weight yeah, in I'm, that well, as possible. Yeah, I buy my food based so you're, on weight. So you're, you're, <laughs> <laughs> you're <laughs> measured by the pound. <laughs> yeah, basically, I'm, I'm buying the food in the canteen. Pound for like, pound. That's the heaviest plate of food. I'll have that. Yeah, no, um, I appreciate that. That's that or a cheesecake, but then I'll like a, a cheeky lemon drizzle. I love lemon drizzle. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. Ooh. So last question. Basically, we're both fat. So next question. <laughs> uh, question four. Who is most likely to hit reply to all, uh, an all-company-wide email? Oh, what's it like a reply all? Yeah, who's going to do the, the embarrassing reply all? This isn't... <laughs> I don't think this has worked out well because I've <laughs> asked you the questions and you've given your opinion, which is... Not where I wanted it well, to no, go. We, we both have the opportunity of opinion. Do you think that I would do that? No. I don't think you'd reply all. I only I think you would clap on the plane if you were excited enough to get where you're going and you've had a couple of drinks. <laughs> um, I And you would have had a couple of drinks. Um, I don't think you'd walk into the office with your clothes inside out. Um, but I, oh, I'm not sure. I, I think we both try and once. get the birthday cake. I actually went to school with my trousers inside out once. But it would be me that's done it. Yeah, yeah, because I was a juvenile at the time. You're you're a you're a you're a you're a child in a great man's body <laughs> yeah, now. To be fair, yeah. I was trying to find a really right. nice way of putting it, Good. but right. see, I've matured like a fine wine. Okay. Can't can't say can't say the same. I'm like the an case inflated for you. old can of apple tango. 
I'm ready to go, Ooh. but we're not quite ready yet. I haven't had apple tango for... Yeah, you can only buy in chip shops. Right, <laughs> <laughs> on that note... With a shandy bass. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am shandy bass. Um, yeah, I think we've learned a bit more about ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, your opinion of me is lower than I thought. Well, your opinion's low of me if you think I'm going to clap a plane. Not I'm not sure how I feel about that. Yeah, sorry. Um, we might be back Cheers. next week, but we might have just broken up this <laughs> this dynamic now. Um, Look, we've had a good run. We've we? had a good run. Yeah, thanks for joining us for 30 plus episodes. I'm um, Hopefully we'll make it to 52 by the end of this year. <laughs> we'll uh, give it a go. But we won't talk. It'll be like the Sex and the City remake. We'll just have to do it in different rooms. <laughs> I want a green screen and I want to actually be in the other room yeah, whilst we we'll do just the rest pretend. of the recordings, please. Yeah, you can enjoy that. Anyway, thank you for joining <laughs> us. We'll be back next week. I've thank been Andy. Thank you very much. And I've been Emma. In a bit. See ya.